Hey guys, what's up? It's Sam here from CG Candy, and uh, today I'm going to do another Cinema 4D quick tip tutorial. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's probably already been covered in many videos, but you know, not by me. So let's go ahead and check it out. And today's topic is the compositing tag. So let's talk about it and why you want to use it. All right, so let's go ahead and drop a compositing tag on something here. Uh, we'll put it on our sphere, okay? So to do that, you hold down right click, you want to go to Cinema 4D Tags, and you want to go to Compositing. All right, so what is this thing? Well, there's tons of options on here. This is one of the most widely used, commonly used, and powerful tags in Cinema 4D. So this is something you really want to know if you're coming from any other program, especially because it's not quite the same way as it is in Maya or 3ds Max. Um, I'm just going to turn up the anti-aliasing on this because I can. All right, so let's look at these settings. All right, so basically on any object you put these on or any child, child objects of that object, uh, the settings are going to cover. So what do we have here? We have cast shadows. Okay, so let me drop a light in here so we can just confirm that this is working. I'm going to just put a shadow on this light. Set it to soft, bam. All right, so you can see now that my, my cube and my sphere are casting shadows. All right, so let's say for some reason, whatever reason, you know, whatever is in your project, you don't want this sphere to cast a shadow. You want that cube to still. So on this compositing tag, we're going to turn off cast shadows, all right? And it does exactly what you would think it does. The sphere no longer casts shadows, but the cube still does. Perfect, all right? So the rest is, you know, now that you know that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, receives shadows. Okay, so do I want um, this floor plane, for instance, to get the shadows from this cube? So let's say the cube is casting a shadow, but if I turn off receive shadows on this plane, then it's not going to have any shadows on it. It doesn't receive any shadows. Um, so let's go ahead and skip that. Scene by camera. Okay, so what that means is that uh, we're looking through a camera all the time, whether you've created a camera or whether you're using the default viewport camera. Um, is it seen by camera? Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that off on our sphere. And um, I think in maybe another version that actually controlled the viewport, which it's not seeming to do. But there you go. You can see that we no longer have our sphere there. But the difference of deactivating this, for example, by hitting this uh, check mark here, uh, is that I can still see the ambient occlusion being cast from that uh, sphere. So for all intents and purposes, it's still there. It's just not visible. Um, so let me show you in another way what that what I mean by that. So if I were to put this compositing tag on the cube here and turn off seen by camera. Now let's, let's see what happens. Okay, so I can still see it in the reflection. I can see it in the shadows. It's still casting shadows. It's just not visible anymore. Um, there's a lot of reasons that you might want to do that. And one of them is, let's say you're using um, an HDR or a background or something in your scene. And let's say I want this background to you know, cast these reflection, this white reflection on the top of my sphere, but I don't actually want to see it. So I go ahead and put this compositing tag on it, uncheck um, scene by camera, and now it's behaving like it did before, but now I have this alpha background here, so I can put anything I want back there. So that's, uh, that's one of the reasons you would use that. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, we got scene by rays. Okay, so this would be like uh, all all types of rays, reflections. You can see if I if I turn it off, it just disables refraction, reflection, and AO. So it's just a quicker way of of doing those without having to do them one by one. Um, going on, let's see scene by GI. So global illumination. So all right, let's say uh, let's go ahead and turn on global illumination for a second. Uh, and let's say that. I want a, um, let, me, let me take this off the cube for a second, and let's make a 100% percent 
bright luminant material to go on this cube, okay? So what's going to happen is with GI on, I don't think I turned it on properly, whoops. Uh, give me a second to calculate here. Um, this cube is illuminating light. It's actually giving off light to the other objects around it. So maybe for whatever reason, I don't want it to do that, but I still want it to be brightly lit. I could turn off scene by GI and it's no longer uh, being calculated and it's not giving off any light anymore. All right, so what else do we have? Compositing background. Um, this one I'm not to... Uh, I'm not going to be the best at explaining, but essentially you can use it for creating seamless floors and stuff like that. Let's let's see if it uh, if it works for me. I don't use this one too often. Um, oh, let me turn off GI. Okay, so I think you have to have a material on the background as well. Let's try that real quick. We'll make a background object. And let's put a material on there. Oh, it did not work. Let me see if I put it on the same one for both. There we go. Okay, so now that I have the same material, uh, basically it takes away the seam from the background. Let me uncheck that and you can see what I'm talking about. So now you see there's a, a very obvious seam there of the light and the shadows. Uh, on the background, if I were to check compositing background, uh, I now have no seam there and it's just a nice infinite background, okay? Compositing background for HDR maps, uh, I'm not going to really go into that one, it's kind of specific. Scene by transparency, okay? So let's try this one out. Let's make a transparent material, put it on our front object, and let's see what happens. Okay. Um, Transparency is really high on that. Let me turn it down a little. Okay, so I can see the cube back there through my sphere. Let me move this up because I'm just uh, being anal about that. All right, so I can see the cube through the sphere. So let's go ahead and on the compositing tag for the cube, let's say we don't want it seen by transparency. So we uncheck that and voila, now it is not visible through that object. Okay. We also have seen by refraction. So refraction is another uh, setting on the transparency here. So we can, the default is one. If we set this up and down, we get refracting uh, happening here. So you can see there's the cube refracting through the um, sphere. So let's turn off seen by refractions and voila, it's not showing through anymore. All right. Uh, next one, seen by reflection. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if I have this reflective material on here and I turn off seen by reflection, I think I already went over this one, on the cube, uh, I no longer see it in the reflection of that sphere. And then lastly, we have seen by AO, which is short for ambient occlusion. So let me turn off my light for a second and I'll I don't know if everybody knows what ambient occlusion is, so I'll talk about it. So ambient occlusion is a really cool render setting that I like to use in basically everything that I make. Um, what it does is when objects are close to each other, it creates shadow. So it's based on distance. You can see here in the settings that it has um, distance controls. So it's all going to depend, depend on the scale of your scene. Excuse me. Um, but by default, it's pretty nicely set up with Cinema's default object size. So um, that's why earlier you were seeing that shadow on the ground. So this is, it's really awesome when you have a lot of detail. I don't have an object uh, that's too great to show you what I mean by that. But uh, let me think here, what, what would be good? Maybe just this guy, he's not the best example. But um, let's go ahead and render him without ambient occlusion. We'll compare it. So let's put up just kind of a bright white material on him. I'll turn off the specular so it's easier to see. And let's put that on our guy. Okay, so without our ambient occlusion, let's see what happens. Um, okay, so it looks all right, you know. It's pretty default, three-point lighting. That's the default light in cinema. 
but you can see that there's no real shadowing happening. So let's turn it on. And now, uh, if you can see it, like in here, we're getting this really nice shadowing effect. Uh, you know, like I said, this isn't the best object to really show it off. Um, but you can see it happening on this sphere as well. See the soft shadow coming off? So it's based on the distance between the two objects. So because these are touching each other, uh, this occlusion is happening here on the floor and it's also happening at the bottom of the box. If I were to move this object up and render it, it's going to be uh, pretty much gone now. Um, and then if you set up the distance of the maximum ray length, the minimum ray length, it's going to happen further away. So even though this object is now a few feet above the ground, you can see that it's still occluding all the way up here. So that is ambient occlusion. Now, sometimes you might not want an object to be seen by ambient occlusion. Like uh, an example of that might be, let's say you have a light in your scene, like a, a light bulb, uh, you know, like an exposed light bulb or something. So if you want that to be brightly illuminated it's not you don't want that shadow on there because it's a light source and it's really bright so on that object I can put that compositing tag and turn off seen by ambient inclusion all right so that is all of the checkboxes um, for the different uh, main settings here and now we have a few other options so let's look at those force anti-aliasing this one um, although I use it a lot less than the other ones it's really cool and so let's see what that does. So maybe in your scene, you have an object that has a ton of little tiny details on it. And maybe it's like a book with some text on it. And uh, it's hard to read because it's, it's jagged and pixelated. But everything else looks fine. So I don't want to crank up all of my anti-aliasing settings in my entire scene and slow the whole scene down. I could, I could turn them up for that one object. So... If I go down here and I hit force anti-aliasing, I can turn it up for just that object. And now it'll get uh, more samples on it and everything else will calculate uh, with this global setting. So that is really nice. Uh, and it saved my butt on a few things. Uh, the next one is matte object. All right, this one is really cool too. So let's see. Okay, so maybe you wanna render um, something in a couple different passes for Photoshop okay so let's say I have this guy and he's behind an object and I want to render a few different layers okay so I want the sphere to be on its own layer so that I can do adjustments to just that object and I want uh, him to be cut out so let's or sorry if I want to render the person on one layer so let's go to this uh, sphere and we'll put matte object we'll check that and black is going to mean that it's fully transparent so when I hit render it's cutting that shape out of the guy uh, and it's rendering an alpha channel there so if I put the same setting on the floor you can see that now uh, and actually let's put it on the background too now I have this guy on his own layer uh, an alpha channel for everything else, but it's still cutting that shape out of them. So um, I can't think of any examples of why this is really useful off the top of my head, but it it really is. Uh, it's great. I use it in projects a lot, and uh, you know you'll you'll definitely think of something to do with it. All right, so those are the main um, compositing tag things. Uh, I'm not going to go into this one because I don't really use it. It looks like it's just. Uh, settings specifically to global illumination um, okay the exclusion tag all right this is a good one I'm gonna start a new scene for this um, all right so this tag here um, again this is getting pretty specific on like you're not going to use this a whole lot unless you really get into advanced stuff in cinema but you can um, exclude and include different objects from each other. So uh, let's say I want uh, this light to be excluded from uh, an object in my scene. All right, so what does that mean? Okay, let me, uh, let's say you want this sphere to exclude this light. All right, go ahead and hit render. 
and whoops, I did that backwards. Let me try this. Let's go on the light actually, because it's the same principle. And we'll go to project, and we're going to do exclude, and we're going to exclude the sphere. All right, so let's drag that sphere into there. And now this uh, sphere is not getting any light from that light. Uh, you can't really tell because that now there's no light on it at all. But let's put another light in here. So now it's getting this light, but it's not getting that light. And this is really useful because uh, if you're familiar in Maya with light linking, that's the same idea. Um, basically, you can have a light that just lights up one object. If you really want to call attention to something or like be really specific about your lighting, but you don't want to light your whole scene with that light, you can do a lot of uh, light linking that way. Um, you can also exclude objects from each other's reflections. So let's say uh, you want this to be visible in reflections of most things, but not on the floor, because for whatever reason, you know, maybe your client says, uh, I don't like that that giant sphere in the floor reflection. Can you take that out? But it looks good everywhere else. So you could exclude it from just that one object. Um, all right, so that's, you know, that was a really quick introduction to that, but let's move on to object buffers. All righty, so if you've ever created a mat for something in any program, or if anyone has asked you to create a mat for that, um, this is how you would do that. So, okay, let's, let's do that real quick. All right, let's say in Photoshop, I want a selection mat that I can use to isolate this sphere from the background, okay? Or let's say we need a couple, okay? We want to have compositing control over everything in our scene. So here is, uh, you know, just a simple scene. Let's put a compositing tag on each object. You can hold control and you can drag that tag to duplicate it. And um, we're going to make three object buffers, okay? So let's make the first one, one. Let's go to the second object, make that two. Third object, make it three. And now in our render settings, to get this to actually do anything, we have to create three object buffers. So let's make one, two, three. And now that we've called them one, two, and three in here, we're going to have to match that. So we have one, now we have two, now we have three. Okay, I changed the first one to one, second to two, third to three. All right, so let's uh, turn on multipass rendering so that we'll get those. You see if I turn that off, uh, these are grayed out. Um, I don't really want to save right now, but uh, let's, yeah, let's try this out. Okay, so I'm going to render this. Uh, let's do, turn off multi-layer file. Um, all right, let's render to picture viewer. All right, so now let's go to layer. All right, here we are. We have three object buffers. Um, I can't see anything in them until I change it to single pass. All right, there we go. So now I have this white object here. I have, this is my sphere. I put it as object buffer two and object buffer three was my floor. So now I could take this in Photoshop and I can use these to select different elements of that. I can use them as a mat, use them as an alpha channel. I can use them however I want to. But um, one of the easiest ways to do that is just to, you know, you, there's more specific ways, but you could just use a magic wand on the white part. And then you could go back to your main layer and now you have that selected. So you could, let's say you want to adjust the color of it. You could now do it to just that object and it'll match perfectly to what you have in the 3D scene. Alrighty, that's just about all that I wanted to go over with the compositing tag, and I hope this was useful to some people. Um, one more thing about this matte object is you don't have to make it black. You can make the matte uh, a little lighter so that something is semi-transparent. Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, if anyone has any requests on what I should do a tutorial for, please let me know, and I'll get on it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.